Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Back for more preamp fun. Today we're going to wire up the preamp tube, the volume control, and the RCA jacks. Again, this is a super simple project, which I hope y'all are enjoying watching, and some of you may plan to build this thing, but don't do it just yet. I still haven't tested this. I have no idea what this thing sounds like, so let's get through the project. Don't jump ahead of me. Let me test this thing out, but this likely can be a really nice preamp that's super easy to build. So let's get on with the show. Okay, got most of the preamp tube wired up, and let me just kind of go over how I did some of this. Here is the 470K grid leak resistor, and it goes from the body of the RCA jack to the input pin, or the positive of the input. And then from here, you can see the 10K grid stopper that goes down to the grid of the tube, and you want the resistor body down towards the pin of the tube, not up here at the top. So it goes the, from the input signal down to the grid. This is our signal input. Then over here on this side, you can see the same thing. Here's our grid stopper that goes from the grid up to our input. And then we have this grid leak resistor that goes from this input to the ground. And then these two white wires one from each RCA jack body comes around here and goes over to this ground point. And then we ran this ground, comes from here and goes up to our star ground. Here are our two cathode resistors and these, let me see if I can, these green wires, you can see one of them here goes from this pin on the tag strip around to the cathode pin, which is back here. And then the other one goes from this cathode pin and comes up here to this terminal on the tag strip. And then we ran this plate wire up here to this terminal. And then we took this plate wire and ran it up with this blue wire over here to this terminal. And the last thing we did is these are our plate load resistors and they go from each plate up to this common point here and then I soldered it into this blue wire, put some heat shrink tubing on it and then it runs around like this over here to our V plus and you can see I've ran this up like high, 3D, above the base. So it's really far away from this heater current. We don't want it anywhere near there. And that rounds out wiring up the front end of the preamp tube. So the next thing we need to do is we've got these two jacks over here which are the output jacks and we need to hook up the coupling caps to these two terminals they need to go over to the volume control and then one side of the volume control has the coupling cap one side has the ground and then the signal comes off the middle and I wanted to install all of this in a way where the leads would be as short as possible. So I decided to put the volume control in with the terminals facing the chassis. And that way the leads are as short as possible and there's no reason to run shielded wire when you've only got like a half an inch of the wire exposed. So that's going to simplify hooking all of this up. And as you can see, these coupling caps are going to connect to the, these plate terminals here on the end of this tag strip. And then let me show you how I 
wired up this potentiometer on the other side and it looks like this these are the two grounds that are on this end of the potentiometer and then these are the two signal wires these ones in the center and this is for the right channel and this is for the left channel and then I ran the caps across into this end terminal down here on both sides and that's going to get the signal where it needs to go. You need to check and make sure that when you've got the volume turned to the left or counterclockwise, you want to make sure that you've got almost zero ohms between the ground and the signal going to the output. And then as you turn the knob to the right, it's going to switch where there's high resistance between the signal and ground and almost zero ohms between where the cap connects and the signal out. And that way, it'll make sure that when you turn it clockwise, it gets loud like you know it should. So anyway, now all I need to do is I need to run a ground from this side over and around to this point and then a ground from this side up and around and over to here and then I can ground the potentiometer to that same ground terminal here that's on the body of the RCA jacks hook the signal up here to the center and hook the coupling cap here and here and we're all done so let me get that wired up and I can show you what the finished preamp looks like well here it is all done and here are our output jacks hooked up. This goes to the, the center of this pin goes to the center of this 250K volume control. And then this is the white one that goes to the center for the other channel on this. These are the grounds. These white wires hook up to our central ground here. And then these caps hook up to the other side of the potentiometer. Here are our two cathode bypass caps. Like I said, I had a couple of audio note ones that I bought for a project and ended up not using because we went with LED bias. And so we're going to put those in here. And then let me flip it over and zoom out and show you what this thing looks like. And there we go. Rectifier 2 preamp to these are the RCA outs on the other side we have our RCA in and then and here's the volume control we ended up using which I think looks really nice with this little preamp and there we go that's it oh and here's the power switch so there we go I think it turned out looking nice it's a really small footprint little amp it's smaller than the 6bm8 was it does make it a little more difficult to build and so if this is your first project you might want to get a little larger chassis you can uh, add some tag strips if you need to you know there's no sin in having some bolts through the top that hold down the extra tag strips that give you some points to solder to, but I think it looks really nice not having any hardware exposed on the outside. And then you can see back here on the back, here's our IEC socket, here's our two bolts that we had for the choke, and I scraped the paint off from under this bolt here as well as on the other side, so we got a nice, really good solid ground. And there we go. So let's wrap this video up. Well, there we go. Hope I showed y'all enough detail where if you're gonna build this, got some tips and kind of see how I laid everything out. Obviously you can lay this out and build it however you like. You might wanna put it on a little bigger chassis. I tried to fit it on as small a one as I thought I could fit it on. And it's a pretty compact little guy here. No idea what this thing sounds like, what kind of game we're going to get out of it. That's all for the next video. I also plan on going into a deep dive on this schematic because I feel like that this little preamp 
really can help people understand how tubes operate and how they amplify sound. So we're going to probably do maybe a video just on that and talk about components and how resistors work, what their job is, how capacitors work. That's a confusing topic. Also talk some about transformers and how they work and then do a pretty deep dive into the schematic because I think this could be a really good learning tool for beginners to understand how tubes operate. This is its competition out of our shootout. In my opinion, this little guy sounded the best. And we've got this little guy that's even littler. That's even a word. Anyway, be interesting to see how this compares to that. The main difference is this is using one of the tubes as a cathode follower. I also want to do some testing to see if this whole impedance matching cathode follower, if that stuff's measurable. The other big difference is this one has the volume pot on the output. This one's got it on the input. So that'll be fun to see the difference in those two ways of controlling the volume. So we're probably going to do two more videos. We're going to do one doing a deep dive in the schematic and then the second one we're going to hook this little guy up to the scope and we're going to hook it up to the analog discovery 2 with the audio analyzer suite and compare it to the results we got from this. I also want to try this running at different loads. We'll get into all that when we dive into that part of this project. So anyway, hope you're enjoying this little series. If you are, please subscribe, please like the video, and we'll see you soon for some more preamp fun. Have a great day.